There's a report out saying illegal immigrants are costing the American health system at least $23 billion a year. One of the important things to note is this. The way that the the way the American health system works is, you know, if you or I, or if you're an American citizen, if you were to go to the, you know, emergency room and you needed to get treated for something, maybe your wife's pregnant, she has to give birth, or uh, maybe you, you, know, you break a bone or something like that, you have to go there, you get treated, and they will send you a very hefty bill. You're going to pay a lot of money, and you better hope you have insurance, which is actually the premiums have gone up so much that it's hard for us anyways. But if you're an illegal alien, you don't have to pay anything. There, there's no accountability. You don't have to pay anything if you're an illegal alien. I mean, technically you do. Technically you do. Uh, this is actually heavily exploited by illegal aliens and homeless people <clears throat> because they're not on the system. One of the requirements in our medical system is they cannot deny care. So if someone is wheeled into the emergency room and they've been shot or they've been hit by a car or you know they're, they're giving birth or something like that, the doctors can't say, oh, they don't have money, they don't have insurance, send them home. The doctors have to treat them. Personally, I, I think that's a good practice. I, 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 don't want, I would not want a medical system where, you know, you're shot and bleeding out, and they're like, check, it, check his uh, insurance plan. <laughs> you know, let, let's see if we, we can afford to treat him up, you know, too bad, and they, they wheel you outside and drop you on the curb. I wouldn't want that. But people are exploiting this. The problem is this. Illegal aliens are not on the books. Illegal aliens, they have no documentation for the most part. They have, there's no way of tracking them down. There's no way of verifying their identities. There's no way of holding them accountable. And because there's none of this in place, there's no way to ensure that if they, for example, rack up tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical payments, that they ever pay them back. There's no accountability. Uh, the same thing with homeless people, because they, they go in oftentimes, often, you might actually sometimes late at night run into a homeless person who says, oh, I'm not feeling so well, boss, uh, please take me to the hospital. And he, I, I've actually done this before, being a night, thinking I was being a nice guy. You drop them off, what they do is they go to the emergency room and they get a, they get a free bed and a free meal for the night, but they also rack up sometimes ambulance costs. And they rack up, you know, maybe ten thousand dollars in medical costs because they have to do all these tests on them. They do they do it for a free bed and a free meal, and they'll do it every night sometimes. Let me show you what this report found, though, on how much not the homeless people but the illegal aliens are costing the medical industry. And this is the the costs of this are then transferred to you and I when we apply for insurance, or if, for example, we need to just pay our medical bills. Uh, you and I end up shouldering the cost for this in some way. But they say this, illegal immigration places a significant strain on, American, on America's healthcare system, costing taxpayers and hospitals at least $23 billion every year. Uncompensated hospital expenditures for illegal immigrants cost a whopping $8,153,000,000. A new report from the Federation for American Immigration Reform, or FAIR, has found. The number is based on recent estimates of the illegal aliens population, which found that roughly 8.2 million of the illegal aliens currently in the country do not have insurance coverage, making up approximately 31% of the total uninsured population. And they say, quote, if uninsured illegal aliens are assumed to require health care at a rate similar to other uninsured persons, they would make up approximately $8.2 billion of the uncompensated hospital expenditures in the United States, the report explains. But uncompensated hospital costs are just one of the many ways that illegal migrants put strain on the American health care system. Medicaid fraud, another big issue as well. Costs Americans just shy of $8 billion as well, with a report estimating that $7,997,556,000 is lost due to fraud. If it is assumed that illegal immigrants engage in Medicare fraud at, or receive improper Medicaid payments at the same rate as American citizens, then that would be approximately 1,284,508 illegal aliens 
receiving improper Medicaid payouts each year. Notably, we know that they actually commit fraud at higher rates than American citizens. It says Medica- Medicaid for U.S.-born children of legal immigrants also poses a, a significant strain in the system, with an estimated cost of $5,385,000, $7,000. It says at least 53% of illegal alien households are uninsured, meaning that approximately 2.83 million U.S.-born children of illegal aliens are without insurance. They go on to state that, quote, based on the foregoing evidence, FAIR estimates that approximately 75% of these 2.83 million U.S.-born children of illegal aliens, technically citizens at this point, because if you're born here, you're a citizen, but regardless, or 2.1 million are eligible for and receiving Medicaid as members of low-income housing, a similar rate to households with a non-illegal head of household. These costs are split by both the federal and state taxpayers. Notably, you and I shoulder the cost for this. In addition, FAIR also estimates that Medicaid births cost just under $1.6 billion. The report notes that startling fact in the 2010, foreign-born mothers accounted for 22% women coming to the U.S. to give birth. They account for 22% or 790,041 one of the nationwide total of about 3.6 million births, meaning 22% of births in the United States are from illegal aliens, and you pay for that, for the most part. Again, when you put all these numbers together, you're looking at health care costs the American taxpayers are shouldering for illegal aliens at about $23 billion every single year. And actually, pretty pretty conservative estimates. If you if you know the the real numbers on illegal aliens and how the real estimates are probably higher than what's on paper, um, and also the fact that a lot of them come here um, for birth tourism because they give birth, the baby becomes an American citizen, and then there's chain migration, and because of that, you know, base well they they end up becoming cit- they can get a path to citizenship through that. Um, a lot of people come here to give birth and um, their kids are citizens and then they get benefits through the kids and so on, uh, the way this thing works. It's not just that, though. Actually, in New York City, where I'm at currently, they're also building these new migrant shelters. They're giving them free... Remember, they had the hotel. Actually, it's not that far from where I'm at right now. I think it was in Hell's Kitchen. Free hotel, free room service, hundreds of dollars per person every single night. They were staying in better hotels than I get when I travel, right? They were standing in, they were staying in like, like top rated hotels, room service, everything paid for when they got kicked out because they had to, they didn't kick all of them out. They kicked out like the single men. They were protesting because they didn't want to have to go to the migrant shelter, which was at one of the cruise ships. So they, they, they had to go from the home, they had to go from the four star hotel to the cruise ship. What a, what a tragedy. Um, and they didn't want to go. Now that the cruise ship season is starting again, they're trying to create migrant shelters to house all them. And taxpayers here are bearing the burden for all of this. In addition to this, now Eric Adams wants to send these migrants to college for free. So this means, folks, that illegal aliens are getting better treated than American citizens at this point. Free health care, free, free home, free food, free college. They're living the socialist dream. They're, they're living the so the, the, they're getting the Bernie Sanders package. Everything Bernie Sanders was promising to these poor, high, poor college kids, the illegal aliens are getting all of it. It says here, Eric Adams wants to send New York City migrants to college for free and will cost taxpayers, it says at least, $1.2 million. I find it hard to believe that it's only going to cost $1.2 million, but regardless, that's what they're saying. It says, in the latest sign, there's no end in sight for, uh, to President Biden's border crisis, probably because the State Department is financing it and having the United Nations run it through the IOM, notably, but regardless... They say Mayor Mayor Eric Adams now wants New York taxpayers to foot the bill for migrants to go to college. Adams plans to provide as many as 100 migrants with 12 months of classes, room and board, in upstate Sullivan County. (laughs) Room and board, all expenses paid. And the project could continue indefinitely, forever, the Post has learned. The pilot program to be overseen, remember, pilot programs tend to expand. This is just the beginning. It says the pilot program to be overseen by Adams' newly created city agency, 
a new government agency for this. And remember how government agencies work. Once they create them, they do not uncreate them, right? Because this is people's jobs and government jobs. If you, if you try to abolish parts of the government, you're going to get sued and people get their pensions and everything else. Then once they get these jobs, they're, they're there for life, typically. And you're not going to be able to abolish it, no matter what happens, for the most part. But it says, the Office of Asylum Seeker Operations. That's the new branch of the New York City government. It involves both SUNY Sullivan County College and Tiny Lock uh, Sheldrake and the Center for Discovery, a special education school in nearby Harris. The cost to taxpayers has not been disclosed, they say, but will likely exceed $1.2 million in the first year based on the price tag for two semesters at SUNY Sullivan alone. Uh, remember, this is the pilot program, and they have a government agency now created to manage these types of things giving your hard-earned taxpayers to people breaking American law to live here illegally. But regardless, I think what we're seeing right now is that Biden's policies are not resonating with voters in the way that they hoped. This is why I believe, as I mentioned in a recent episode, they're even beginning to adopt Republican, uh, Republican standards when it comes to law enforcement. They're moving away from soft on crime. And interestingly, you even see Biden. The Democrats are now, Biden himself said this, in fact, saying that Republicans want to defund the police. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe some Republicans want to defund the police because they think that they, they see kind of the two-tiered system of justice. But for the most part, that was not a Republican stance. That was a very far left. That was like Black Lives Matter and Antifa type stance. This is like the, the socialists, you know, talking about burning down American cities. Uh, they were the ones who wanted to defund the police. The Republicans were more the pro-police, thin blue line types. And if you remember when Trump was in office, Trump was opposing it. The Bi Biden himself is now saying that Republicans want to defund the police. And Biden is talking about becoming tough on crime yet again. <laughs> He's doing the same thing now with immigration. Biden just restored a Trump-era policy that makes it so that people who enter America illegally cannot apply for asylum. Let me show you this. This is Washington Post. It said, asylum seekers who cross U.S. border illegally face new Biden rule. It says the Biden administration on Tuesday uh, issued its most restrictive border control measure to date, announcing plans for a temporary rule that will penalize asylum seekers who cross the border Ill illegally or do not apply for protection in other nations they pass through on their way to the United States. Because again, they, they pass, if you're coming from a country that would enable you to apply as an, as an asylum seeker, you would have to pass through several countries uh, that are not considered dangerous countries that would require you to apply for asylum. The way asylum normally works is you apply for it in the first safe country you arrive in. Mexico, for example, would not be considered a danger, even though cartels are a problem. If you pass through Mexico, you should apply for asylum there, if you go by the way the law actually works.